Ja, hallo, ich bin hier mit... Oh, warte mal, wir sollten das eigentlich auf Englisch machen, ne? I have no idea. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, it's better <laughs> that we do it in English. So, I'm here with Monia Fulbert from Vienna, and she is an Urgestein. What is Urgestein in English? Fossil. <laughs> the bedrock of the German-speaking integral Fossil. community. <laughs> yeah. And I want to talk to her because uh, we plan with other people to participate in the Integral European Conference and talk about integral salons. And this seems to be a speciality of the German speaking integral community. And so I wanted to uh, explore a little bit the history of the community. And as Monia was there from the very, very beginning, I guess. So I got to know her when I uh, started to join the ev events. I think it was in 2000 or something in Berlin. Uh, since then, I saw you. And since 2006, we had more contact by creating the, you created the integral feminine consciousness field. And from then on, we have regular contact and we have done already several of these conversations and we also do group meetings and so on. This is all part of what I call my online integral salon, what I was doing with her and other people. So let's start to talk about the integral community in German speaking countries. When did you, first of all, when did you, um, Get aware of uh, Ken Wilber's work, and then what? I got aware of Wilber already in 1988, uh, when he his first book, which I still feel is a rather good book, although he doesn't really promote it anymore, having developed good things. Um, and I was bored when I read it because I came from the New Age uh, field experimenting with everything, with energies and uh, whatever came along. I, did, I don't think I missed anything of the New Age field, which was very entertaining. And I wasn't really thrilled with this book. It was much too dry and not too juicy enough. Anyway, um, in Yeah, I guess in 1999 or 2000, somebody told me that uh, there was a Wilbur community online, a list of Wilbur fans, and there were only men there. And yeah, so that's just what I needed. So I jumped right in and presented my view of an approach to Wilbur, which finally led in, as you mentioned, To the founding of a female approach or female consciousness, uh, feminine, female, whatever. Uh, because we noticed that women have a different way of approaching Wilbur. On the other hand, I, of course, am an intellect, an intellectual, and I enjoyed reading his books. And when I read Eros, Cosmos, Logos, Uh, which is in English sex, ecology, and I don't know. Uh, I really got hooked, in particular with the footnotes. Uh, and I noticed that Wilbur, Wilbur's map uh, was just, uh, yeah, it was really a map to orient you where you were, where you just, where you came from and where you might be going. And it's uh, and it has been like this ever since. The only difference, uh, as I said, was uh, first we started. I started with four men in Vienna, a reading group. Well, all of them were very knowledgeable. They knew Wilbur from from the back. I didn't. I just had read sex ecology and. One, ta uh, one taste later on. And actually it was rather easy because whenever he wrote a new book, we read it. So it was not really like it is now that you have an enormous amount of uh, texts and 
when you really start with yoga just now, it takes some time and some endurance just to read all that. Mm -hmm. So it's most easy for us or easier for us. Uh, we met, we discussed what he wrote, whether we agreed or not. And uh, then he came up. Oh, yes. And then I started to translate. Uh, can, we, can, we, can I interfere a moment because I want to comment a little bit on this. What I found is the first attraction, at least from, let's say, people after 2000 or before 2000 even, uh, was the intellectual attraction. No, we were fascinated by this theory. And um, for me, it was not sex ecology something uh, because I found it too difficult. So many footnotes and so many, you know, and he talked about philosophers, which I didn't know because I don't have a big uh, education in philosophy, uh, philosophical uh, landscape. Uh, and so it was sort of, no, but I had read before the first book was Grace and Grit in Italian oh, because yeah. it was it was uh, translated in Italian and no boundaries. Mm -hmm. And actually both uh, books uh, uh, fascinated me because in no boundaries that came to me finally clear why the um, uh, psychologists think that their method is the only one uh, valid and they are fighting against others. And some have with their method uh, success and uh, with other people not. And so he, Wilbur figured out that certain uh, types of psychotherapy belong to certain stages of development of the client. And that for me was already, oh, you know. And then what really hooked me up was uh, half uh, east of, no, not east of Eden, um, Halbzeit der Evolution, up from Eden, <laughs> it is in English. And there I was fascinated about, you know, there was so much to understand, which before I thought, how is that possible? And there was the explanation. For instance, why women in patriarchy were not, uh, you know, had not the same status as, as men. And that came clear to me and many of these things. So I don't tell you here, the people who are watching, read the book. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> you get some answers on these questions. And then later, I, as you say, when it comes out slowly, it's better. I read the excerpts, which were online. Yeah. And these also were very fascinating to me. And then, as you say, we women at a certain moment thought we are too much in the head. There's too much splitting how do you say splitting the 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 needle or, or what I'm saying uh, to figure out how many angels can dance on the top of a needle, no? Something like this, and people got uh, emotional about, oh, that's like this, or no, and he says it's in this way, and so it was a little bit too much, and so you started to to create then the feminine female field, and we met. Well, I noticed that most of the women who came to our, then we were started out with the term Salon, uh, which is a very ancient Austrian tradition that women collect, uh, invited all the artists and philosophers to their house. And so we right away jumped at it. And of course, you can't compare it. We just had this little thing to eat, but, uh, in the interruptions and otherwise we just talk and talk and talk. Um, to me, the women all had read, as you mentioned, Grace and Grit. And I, it was rather at a late time that I started reading Grace and Grit and it was the first and only book in ages, in decades, that I really made me cry. I cried my heart out because yeah, I felt so sorry for him and his, and his wife. And then I thought, well, this is also a, a part of Wilbur, but he never shows it. He just shows his intellectual capacities that are just impressive. And as you mentioned, the footnotes in Sex and Ecology, this was what I had the feeling that my uh, consciousness jumped like this. It, 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 it widened and all of a sudden I could see 
how things really fit together. So uh, that was one of uh, the peak experiences. And the other one was when he published Umaritis. <laughs> and everybody took it very serious in uh, the German community. But he himself pointed out that this was just a parody of something. And uh, as I, at that time, I translated some of his texts on the web because it would take a long time until they were published and printed. And of course, you all, we all know that the people from the former Eastern German countries don't speak, they are not fluent in English, they are fluent in Russian. So, but there were many of them interested. And that's why I started, I'm a translator, a trade translator, so, and I corresponded with Wilbur and that was really fascinating trying to invent new expressions for his new terms. Um, but in, in Vienna, uh, we were about 10, 12 people meeting after two years or so. And uh, there were different interests. There was an interest in reading the books and discussing it, which was so I split up everything. We, we started a book discussion group. Uh, we started a, a, a spiral dynamics group when we went through our uh, status at that time and uh, tried to figure out where we were. Uh, I don't know how, well, I guess everybody will be familiar with uh, spiral dynamics colors and the development of consciousness. Uh, so this was one group and then we had the Salon group where we uh, covered whatever topic came up and as always, but mostly it was just, we start out to pull at one thread and then we had the whole universe at the Salon. So that was uh, an interesting experience and I enjoyed organizing the Salons. I did it together with a spiritually uh, adept uh, friend. Uh, and we still work together. And now we are on Zoom. We still uh, do a Zoom salon. In the meantime, we had passed on the salon to others and that didn't work. I don't know what the qualifications are for a salon uh, organizer. First of all, I guess you have to be curious all the time for new, new things. And we are now uh, covering uh, the, what, what is called meta-modern thinking. Okay. Can uh, I first intervene? And again, could you explain for people who don't know what the salon is? You said the salon in Vienna, but it was an artistic or literary salon, even in the 1800s, or, no? Uh, it has a long tradition. Um, so it's for, for us or for you in Austria, it's, it's normal to have a salon. And so you, you do it now with integral. But can you explain what, what's the characteristics of an integral salon, how you see it? How, how would you define an integral salon? Uh, it can be your experience alone. It might not be the experience of somebody in Switzerland. I don't know. But uh, tell me a little bit how you see it. Uh, well, first of all, an integral salon uses the map of Ken Wilbur, consciousness, uh, the inside, the outside, the individual, the collective. So this is one basic map you keep in mind when you start a topic on whatever it is. Uh, the second quality of a salon is that you are not sure what will there be the result of the day, of the evening. Uh, you try to listen to other people. To try is not a new word, but you do listen to other people, what they mean, what they are trying to convey to you. And then you see and check in your body or your mind or your heart, uh, if you can go in resonance with what they are talking. Uh, it works particularly good with women. 
man, uh, <clears throat> according to their bigger ego, uh, try to preach. Or well, some of them, they know a lot. And of course, they have to, con to convey this information to everybody. So they just like to preach. Oh, whereas women like to listen and respond. And that's one of the differences. And that's why I'm very happy that we now have the female field in, on Zoom as well. Because let, let me let me still interfere. I want to go more to basics. So you have a salon. That means that you invite people to come. Uh, normally in person, now on Zoom, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately for me, fortunately, because I can be in uh, other salons, but uh, normally it's nicer, no, I think, to be in person. Then you have either a topic which is uh, known before, you have either a discussion group or you have a presentation, you invite somebody who uh, presents something to the, to the group or some of the group, is uh, doing something for a topic, or as we do in the uh, female uh, field, we sort of see what is coming up as the topic, and then we are talking about that. These are all possibilities to, to be in a salon. And probably when you are in person, you even have a cup of tea together or a cup of coffee, I guess. <laughs> and then there are different modalities. And as you say, Men often have more the missionary thing, you know, they want to convey what they have understood and they want you to understand. And then uh, often uh, it becomes either too much for the people who are there or uh, boring. And that's the other question, who is coming to these salons? I mean, that's not only people who already know everything. Can you tell me a little bit about who is the the well, the 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 people who are coming and what is the intention how do you want to to what do you want to offer them let's say in this way well uh in vienna and it's different in other austrian cities as in graz or linz there are different ways of handling us alone but the viennese group has been together for yeah for 15 years and it's a kind of uh, relatedness in thinking. Um, for three years, we had a closed group and that really <clears throat> bonded us together. Um, there is an artist, rather a well-known artist, two artists. Uh, there are people who uh, have just regular of business, independent businesses in galleries, art galleries. Uh, there are people who work in the social field. There are people who, and amazingly, in Vienna, we don't have as much, as many coaches as there are in other groups. Many of the integral groups have coaches who try to improve, improve their coaching by uh, applying Wilbur's uh, map. We don't have that. There are there's one coach in our group, but um, so what really? And it's the same people, the same twelve, fifteen people, for decades now. We uh, sort of appreciate that there are other people with the same interests, which are not uh, mainstream interests. Um, like how do you develop your consciousness not everybody does that uh, yeah it comes to think about that at all um, so uh, i understand that you are a sort of a community which is almost closed in the sense that for somebody to come in new is would be a little bit difficult when that's a group which uh, I don't think how is that it would be difficult uh, because if somebody wants this kind of experiences, then he or she would fit in right away. Uh, if they are not interested in developing your consciousness or in ex uh, or uh, talking about uh, extrasensory perception or uh, 
cosmic consciousness. Most of them have experiences like this, although of diff in different uh, settings. Some of them, when they go out into nature, they have nature mysticism. I am rather an indoor mystic. Uh, most of my experiences I had when sitting on my cushion mm -hmm. or on my chair now when I'm, I got older <laughs> had an operation of it. Um, I'd say what attracts people, and actually we don't, we don't uh, have any public, <clears throat> public relations intentions. Mm -hmm. We either we attract people, but we don't, uh, as you said, we don't missionize. Mm -hmm. it's, okay. We are not, and this is something I defended the integral alone from the beginning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that we are not a sect. Mm -hmm. We have so many different systems of belief and of faith. Everyone is different. But we all have this curiosity of finding out what makes others tick, what makes me tick the way I act, the way I enjoy being. Yeah. So what I understand, this is a group more of in the spiritual direction, which is part of integral and uh, more experiential. And this is not necessarily, I say that to the audience, not necessarily the only way. There are other um, uh, groups who are, uh, or salons, who are more interested in figuring out theory, you know, and uh, and there are other uh, salons who are trying to, you know, mediate a little bit. And also the intention. There are uh, many salons who uh, try to attract other people. Their idea is to attract uh, green, green people, you know, people in the green level of consciousness and give them the possibility to to, to the jump into integral, where we have to say that not everybody in the integral salons necessarily is on the integral stage all the time, but they definitely uh, give their intention to, uh, to, to help people to develop. And so they try to, to, to go out and find people who could be ready to, to, the, to the jump and give them the the tools or the possibilities to, to do that. Uh, one difference is that in Germany there is the Integrale Forum, which is an institution. So they experiment with holocratic uh, systems. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> um, we now uh, founded a shadow group to find out whether there are personal shadows or whether the system itself has shadows, which is rather interesting and I'm participating in that as well, because shadow work, hmm, we haven't talked about shadow work yet. Shadow work is one of my hobbies. Uh, and uh, we used it for a long time in Vienna regularly. And most people, and this was very, very, uh, yeah, it was attended the best because not knowing what's in your unconscious and that stops you from using all your energy and your potential in this interests most people. And we did shadow work with very, with excellent results. The shadow work will be created. So this is an intellectual shadow work. It, it hardly uses your body, but just your mind. And uh, yeah, that was quite uh, one of the, yeah, one of the most interesting phases of, of Salon work when we did all the shadow work. Of course, after some time, whoever leads it gets bored because it's always the same shadows and, uh, which might be, well, <laughs> it's not, it's not a green attitude because you have to get emotional and you have to really feel into the other people. But integral on second tier gets a perspective on what you do. 
even, so you don't take yourself as seriously as you did before. And not many people are ready to do that because most people believe uh, I, am, I know what I know and I'm very serious about it. Uh, <clears throat> going on a more comprehensive level, yeah, it's uh, different. So you get a perspective and then people think you are arrogant, which you aren't, but you just have a different perspective on their uh, drama and also on your own drama. So uh, I enjoy being a drama queen, but on the same time, I don't take myself serious anymore when I do that. And uh, luckily I have, we still have, I have this partner still in our salon work and our spiritual and consciousness development. So we laugh a lot together and that's very nice. That's very nice. Yeah, then you, you mentioned the Integralis Forum. I think this is somehow unique in, in the world. And even Ken Wilber said it, that there is an association which is dedicated to, to spread uh, integral knowledge, I would say, but also integral practice. And that's how I came to it. Before it was called Arbeitskreis Ken Wilber. And then they created this uh, independent uh, association. And, uh, but then it's becoming sort of, sort of official, you know? So, or you are a salon, you are part of this um, association, or you are independent, you have to choose. And uh, what I understand that um, when you are part of the association, then there are some guidelines which you have to sort of follow, you know. And as so far, it was only Ken Wilber. It seems that now we are getting more open also to John Gebser and other integral uh, approaches. While when you have a salon which is just yours, you can do what you want. But the problem is the definition of, of integral. You know, the, the word is used in many contexts, but we are also with the conference, for instance, we are more adhering to uh, Ken Wilber's uh, work, no? So, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, on the other hand, as you mentioned, the International European Conference, uh, and uh, they are also very, very knowledgeable about Wilber's work. They really got deep into is what he tries to, con to convey. And uh, of course, there is always the national flavor of a certain integral group. This, and we now in, in the shadow group, uh, where we are German, uh, Swiss, and Austria, this is one of the topics we are going to, to uh, go deeper into the way you, your nationality approaches an integral spectrum. And as you know, the Germans are very, very serious and very, very uh, exact. And the Viennese or Austrians, uh, they sort of dance through it. And the Swiss are quite revolutionary. So it's really funny. And But you, what you really develop is a kind of uh, culture, intercultural competence. And uh, that's also a nice stage. And this is why I joined. Uh, and it took me a long time <clears throat> to get the word German speaking nations, because it was the German nations most of the time. Yeah, uh, that's still, I'm still guilty of that. For me, everybody who is speaking German and the, the language is German, and then you have to divide it into nationalities, which for me seems to be a little bit uh, strange. But, you know, uh, I don't see a difference between you and me, apart from the temperament. <laughs> <laughs> and the interests. <laughs> and the interests, yes. But that's normal. It's not necessarily, in the first sight, it's not necessarily dependent on nationality, you know. We are using the same language, and in many ways we have a similar 
similar history, especially uh, Austria and Germany, maybe less Swiss, uh, yes. Switzerland. Yes, no, it's, it's uh, I found it very fascinating in, uh, in your salon, in your Zoom salon, but the different women, they are so amazingly different. And particularly the one, uh, the, the women's meta group from California, and they are so different. And still, there is something in everybody uh, that's the same. And that's from where we really respond to the other people. Exactly. What, what is the point which is the same, which makes a salon work? Shall we go into that? For me, it's an inner attitude. You, you already said that a little bit. Would you like to say a little more? Well, as, as I mentioned, it's you have to stay curious all your life. I'm now in my eighth decade. And uh, yeah, as I'm still curious. And I'm learning every day something new. And of course, Google and the web uh, could flood you with information. But what you really have to learn is to differentiate what is a pearl and what is just waste, waste uh, information, just to keep things going. And uh, as you notice, uh, the media right now, they enjoy pushing fear of losing your job, of being poor, of dying of uh, dictatorship and to really look at that and say, is that my attitude? No, that's the media. Um, how do I live here? Uh, I live in Vienna on the outskirts and we have a nice apartment. We have no second home. But we have a, a huge terrace and we have animals around, we feed the birds, the squirrels, and we are retired. So it's easier for us, for my husband and me, we've been all around the world most of our lives. And the young people now, for them, it's really hard, it's difficult. And the media don't help in the way they report on, uh, they just exaggerate whatever fear there is and uh, we have been also in our in our zoom salons uh, we have been talking about what kind of fears there are so we are actually applying our wilbur map on the present situation and that is a good thing from i think it's something that really grounds you in your body we don't, uh, this is something, oh, we haven't mentioned uh, the integral life practice yet. So uh, this is one of the books Wilbur started, I don't know, after, after a couple of years together with Terry Patton. And they give you exercises, breathing exercises, meditation exercises, uh, which we also used in our groups not the salon, but also in the salon, yeah, but mostly in other groups, uh, which we called integral life practice groups. So it's a support system for what you are. This is what I feel uh, is one of Wilbur's most uh, important contributions to to the world, I would say, because uh, if you don't, uh, if you are not aware that uh, you are body, mind, and soul, uh, yeah, how how you get easily fooled and and uh, lured along like a pipe 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 pipe, 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 pipe. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and you. Uh, to have a Wilbur map, you really sort of navigate. Yeah, you navigate better. You are less prone to be wrong all the time, let's say in this way. <laughs> 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 and uh, what we were saying, what is uh, the com common thing about the people in, a, in a, such a salon as you called my Women Matters Group? And you said it's curiosity, that's one thing. And then what I think is also 
the willingness to listen to others and not to have discussions, I'm right and you are wrong, but to, to, to listen to each other and get inspired what the others say. And then you, you might uh, say, no, for me, I, I don't agree. Uh, I, I think it's different, but you don't have to, to, insist, on it. to yeah. insist on it. Yeah, you, you can say what you think and why, why you think it. And if there comes a discussion, it's fine. And if not, it's fine too, but it's not this, hostile way of communicating, which seems to be in society now so, so normal, you know, we try to create another conversation culture. And I, I need to say, I, I, it doesn't happen to me in my salons, it never happened, but I saw it in other occasions, also sometimes on the conferences, when there are people who are not willing to do that then they can be, that can be really difficult situations when there's something yeah. insisting. Yeah. 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 yeah, and this is, I think, a, a learning curve, which we still have to do to how to handle people who are, let's say, disturbing. Uh, how can we uh, have them included and, and, um, and, and get out the, nativity of, 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 of the situation and create not a harmony for the harmony's sake, but a harmony of, of let's say, common, how can I say, I want to say common intention, because if a person doesn't have this intention that it's, then it's not the right group. Right. Mm. I'm just uh, remembering because we had, to, yeah, it, it, it's, it turns out rather quickly if somebody doesn't really want to listen to others. And once you, um, on a certain stage of development, uh, you are much more interested what other people say because you know what yourself thinking and that's boring. So uh, you want, you want to get inspired by others. And amazingly enough, it's always, there's always something that can inspire you. And it's sometimes you don't even know where it came from. So uh, I won't uh, mention, of course I do mention channeling, but uh, it's uh, as we, as you uh, had all these, uh, Father Hasselmann uh, talks. Some of it I found very inspiring. I I don't apply it to myself, but I found it interesting th that this is a different approach to topics that have, uh, yeah, they have, mankind has been trying to find out for thousands of years. And of course, I don't want to waste our present development so that science I'm, I'm very much interested in science and I wouldn't uh, drop it because it's not spiritual. That's stupid. So that's an, a stupid uh, attitude. Yeah. No, it's, uh, the, 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 let's say the real scientists uh, say often that they had their uh, inspiration for their right. uh, findings, not by calculating and thinking and so right. on but by a sort of intuition, and then they worked it out into this thinking. Uh, intuition is one of the, uh, let's say, intuition is one of the tools you use after a certain stage very consciously. When you, when you are at a, low, at a lowest, well, at an earlier stage, let's put it this way, when you are at an earlier stage, you have a fleeting, a fleeting impression, but you just, yeah, it's okay. That's just a stupid idea. But at a later stage, you, when you notice there is something, oh, where did it pop up from? You look at it and you test it and you really use it. And uh, this is what we did in this closed group for three years using our intuition and oh it was just because people sort of 
shy back and say, oh, that's uh, the, the top brass level. That's much too high, too spiritual. I don't, that's stupid. No, you just have to open up and, and see what's going on in you. That's my, what my experience. It's not my, not my belief, it's my experience. Uh, and I only believe in experience. So uh, yeah. now we have, as Ken Wilber says, to see all the, all the parts. So the exterior, the look from outside, and the the experience from inside. And we, the more the higher stages are able to use more uh, tools, let's say tools, inner tools, and everything. And what you said before that you get inspiration. That has also to do with the ability to sense into the energies which is between uh, the people and the astonishing thing that's even working on zoom you know nobody thought it would work <laughs> but it's working on also here that was one of the uh, unexpected pleasures uh, of a zoom salon because you really can sense into the other person and i didn't think it was possible but it is yeah and it's a kind of shamanic quality which goes to an early back to an early stage but you don't drop it you use it again you can as Wilbur said transcend and include that's one of the uh yeah one of my favorite uh, quotes of, of him yeah and in certain stages uh, we we sort of forgot it and now in the integral stage we have the permission or even also the drive the need to rediscover these things, you know, and that's exactly why I do what I do, because I feel every idea, I, I would say in 99% of the time when I talk with people, I come out inspired. And that's in the salons even more because we are more people no. and but when I do the single interviews, it's always, you know, it's, it's lifting me up. And it's not so much maybe also because of what we are saying, but that's only one part. The other part is how we are saying and how we are connecting. And, and it's, the, it's the subtle energy. Yeah, there is exactly. that energy flow, uh, which we can pinpoint yet. And on Zoom, it's, it's a new experience. But it definitely is something uh, Zoom has to take care of and not just neglect it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there are Zoom conferences where people just talk and talk and talk and talk. And talk. Yeah, and, and then the other, we the have other. Group. Oops. <laughs> we have a peer group, and it's we had it yesterday, so it's quite fresh in my mind. And uh, yeah, you can go. Everybody says, "Okay, this is my intention to go deeper and deeper and deeper," and you can do it on Zoom. So that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Now I forgot what I wanted to say. I'm it's sorry. Not, it's not important at all. It will come back to you. Yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> I want to 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 do a sort of a, a summary of what salons could be good and why people should dare if they are interested in in integral, for instance, even if they don't know all the books and if they don't know all the theory. Why should they? get out and create groups like that. Oh, that's easy. That's easy <laughs> for themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. For their own development. And you only really know when once you, I wouldn't say teach it, but once you are able to talk about it. And uh, that's your own development. So I, I, I'm very much aware of that. Uh, even if you go into a relationship, it's for your own development. Um, yeah, yeah. That's also what I found out that I can think better when I speak with other people, and I, I'm. That may be individual mm -hmm. that other people can do big talks and so on out of themselves, but I couldn't. To think about my the things in profundity only by myself, it's for me. It's difficult. I need other people, people's Something <laughs> input. Sounds Something. Yeah. Yeah, because a sounding board uh, not only plays back, a sounding board also increases yeah. the volume. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is what I found in our in your Zoom room. <laughs> uh, when I whenever I am terribly tired and, and really uh, not feeling too bright and inspired, 
But after this one hour, I just feel nourished and yeah, I like better. So it's exactly. just a resonance, going into resonance. And Maybe. now I come back to what I wanted to say before. No, Sometimes no, no. I'm in, in, in Zoom conferences and people tell things on, 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 and all the others switch off their video. And it's like when if you speak to other to the emptiness and then it gets so, so how can I say uninspiring. Sometimes I come out of these things and say, why, why do I go there? I don't have any. Not touched. You are not. I'm not touched. Exactly. Touched. And com coming back to, to why create a salon, even if you are in doubt that it is an integral salon because all people have to be in the integral stage of development, do it anyway. Maybe you arrive sooner or later there, you know? And if, when you have the map, you know more or less where, where it goes, where it can go, and you have you can observe it. We have to develop. We cannot just say, oh, I'm there, and now I stay there. And, you know, and then the, the, the question how to integrate people of other stages, if it's uh, important, but also there you learn when there are conflicts, you know, we had it also in one of the groups. And then you will find there is a way to get clearer about your own intentions, about uh, what, what you want to create. And then you learn how to communicate with the person or the people who create problems, let's say. And that's also a big, big, big learning curve, no? So to learn the language of other people who have a different opinion and also sense what is behind, what fear is behind the language, because usually there is a fear behind something. Yeah. And uh, that's from there on, you can, uh, maybe you can communicate yeah. that's uh, yeah well i'm a translator and interpreter so communication mm -hmm. is one of my favorites uh, yeah. and it's also in my uh, astrological uh, this is where i will go in clear communication not just yeah. floundering around and and we uh, this morning i talked uh, to somebody about the way we communicate, because some people, while they talk, they try to find out what they are thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, which we call in German, we call Schwurbeln. So they just meander around and use vocabulary, but not quite sure what it really means when they say that. And other people, lucky me, before I talk, I know what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And it makes a lot of a difference. Yeah, but also the other people need a, a, op a opportunity to do that, to figure out what they are thinking. Okay. And also for that, and an salon can, can be good, you know? And it's it's a know, big... That's, that's his or her way of trying to <laughs> come to a conclusion. Of course, <laughs> some people get impatient. And uh, yeah, but now I know why they are talking that way. And it's just... Uh, they know uh, you have to get to them to know why they are talking that way. Yeah, that's uh, that's the challenge. Yeah. So for for ending this, I still want to say yes. Do create a group. You don't need to call it integral salon. You don't even need to call it salon. You can call it what it what you want. It can be public. It can be not public. I'm doing some women groups public and some women groups not public. You will see it is a wonderful occasion, as Monia says, for your own growth and for the growth of everybody else. And it's fun. You know, it's really, even if there are uncomfortable moments sometimes, you know, and you have to work, you have to remind people to come and find out the, the, the appointments and everything. It's a bit of a work, yes. But at the end, it's giving you a lot. And, and if you are not inclined to do it yourself, Join other people who are doing that. So uh, you don't have to save the world; you just have to save yourself. <laughs> That's we start with that, and with that we can also save the world in a certain oh, sense. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I enjoyed much. talking to you as I always do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> bye bye. And have a nice day.